Hi there, welcome to this Alchemist Chemistry A-level video looking at buffer calculations. These particular buffer calculations will involve adding strong bases to weak acids to generate those buffer solutions in situ, rather than adding a salt to a weak acid as some other buffer calculations may involve. So this is a different type of buffer calculation, but still vitally important to understand how to tackle these questions. So I'm going to take you through the theory and then through the calculation itself. At this point, it's probably saying if you'd like to see another video on that other type of buffer calculation involving weak acids and salts to give you some context and also to help you set up this calculation, then please do check out the card that is appearing in this video, follow the link and watch the video on that buffer calculation first, then come back and watch this one and you'll get even more value from this video. So a little recap, first of all, buffer solutions are solutions that are able to resist changes in pH upon small additions of hydrogen ions or hydroxide ions to the solution. Now to do that, buffers need to have a large reserve or pool of weak acid molecules and conjugate base molecules in, to enable the buffer to resist the change in pH based on shifting positions of equilibrium. Now, to make a solution like that, we could just get a weak acid and dissolve into that weak acid a sufficient quantity of its corresponding salt, because when that salt dissolves and dissociates into uh, its metal ion and negative ion, the negative ion being the conjugate base itself, there would be enough of a quantity of that conjugate base iron to produce our buffer. We've got a large pool or amount of weak acid present and corresponding conjugate base. Another way of making a buffer though, is to take that weak acid and directly react it with a strong alkali, something like sodium hydroxide or potassium hydroxide. That reaction will generate salt and therefore you're producing the salt via the reaction. And as long as we have a large quantity of weak acid left over and enough salt present, we have made ourselves a buffer. So what we have here is an equilibrium expression known as a Ka expression, specifically for the weak acid methanoic acid. So Ka is the acid dissociation constant, a value which is telling us about the extent to which that acid will dissociate. Um, the expression itself has hydrogen ion concentration and conjugate base concentration, in this case methanoic ions, divided by the concentration of the weak acid itself. And we're going to manipulate this Ka expression through our calculation, uh, rearranging the hydrogen ion concentration to work out the pH of a buffer produced by reacting a strong alkali with a weak acid. Okay guys, let's work our way through this uh, worked example, this exam style question together. Hopefully it's really helpful to tackle these questions in the future. So what I've done is I've color coded certain chemicals in the question to help track them through the calculation as well to make things a bit easier for us. So the chemist is being asked to prepare a buffer solution using 200 centimeters cubed of 3.2 mole per liter methanoic acid. That's our weak acid. The Ka or the acid association constant for that acid has been given to us as 1.7 times 10 to the minus four moles per liter. We've also been told we have 800 centimeters cubed of 0.5 mole per liter sodium oxide. That is our strong alkali. I boxed that off in blue again, so we can keep track of it throughout the calculation. We're finally being asked to work out the pH produced by this buffer solution. We're going to tackle this calculation in a step-by-step -step methodical process, which will be the same approach for any buffer solution produced between a weak acid and a strong alkali. The first step in our calculation is to calculate the moles of weak acid being added initially. Now, don't forget that weak acid will react with the strong alkali when it's added, so this is only the starting amount of weak acid, in this case, methanoic acid present. So moles is equal to concentration times volume. That's 3.2 moles per liter times 200 over 1,000, converting our volume from centimeters cubed into decimeters cubed. And we have 0.64 moles of methanoic acid present at the start of creating this buffer solution. So we're gonna look at how many moles of strong alkali were being added to that initial amount of methanoic acid. Now, it's really important to understand this, guys, that the alkali will react directly with that weak acid, creating salt and therefore generating conjugate base as part of the reaction. So we can make a really important assumption here. The moles of strong alkali being added is equivalent to the moles of conjugate base, in this, in this case, methanoate ions, being generated by the reaction. So we now have a quantity of conjugate base to plug into our Ka expression later on. Moles equals concentration times volume. 0.5 moles per liter of sodium hydroxide being added, multiplied by the volume in decimeters cubed, that's 800, 800 divided by 1,000, converting centimeters cubed into decimeters cubed, 0.4 moles of methanoate ions, and therefore conjugate base, being generated by this reaction. 
Okay, now we're going to see how many moles of weak acid remain after that reaction with the strong alkali. It's really important to realize that all of the strong alkali will react and be exhausted. There'll be none left by the end of that reaction process. It will reduce the amount of weak acid present by the exact amount of alkali added because it's a one-to-one -one ratio reaction. And it will also generate that amount of conjugate base as a result of the reaction. So it's really important to realize that uh, the weak acid will actually decrease in its amount and simultaneously, the conjugate base will increase in its amount by the same quantity. So we won't have the same amount of weak acid present as we had initially. It would have gone down by as much as reacted with the strong alkali. So effectively, that's what's going on here in step three. We're working out the moles of weak acid remaining left after its, com its complete reaction with the uh, present alkali. So we had 0.64 moles of weak acid present at the start. We added 0.4 moles of strong alkali to it, which reacted with it. So all we have left is 0.24 moles of methanoic acid remaining. Working methodically, we move on to step four. Now, you may have noticed that the K expression doesn't actually utilize moles. It works with concentrations of weak acid in conjugate base. So we need to convert our moles of methanoic acid and methanoic ions into concentrations of methanoic acid and methanoic ions. We do that by dividing by the new total volume of solution. Because we've mixed two solutions together, we've got a larger volume of solution, there's a slight dilution factor going on, so we have to work out the new concentrations of methanoic acid and methanoic ions. Now, very fortunately, in this example, we've made a one decimeter cube solution. So we're effectively dividing number of moles of each of the substances by the number one, so it's generating the same number. So this is a very rare situation where the number of moles and the concentrations are the same value or quantity. But in any other situation, if that wasn't a one decimeter cube solution, if our volumes added up to a different number, then our concentration values would differ and we'd need to calculate that very carefully. Step five requires us to rearrange the K expression to make hydrogen ions the subject of the expression. The easiest way to do that is to multiply both sides of the equation by the weak acid concentration, in this case, methanoic acid concentration, and then divide both sides of the equation by the conjugate base concentration, or the methanoic ion concentration. That will leave us with this expression here. Hydrogen ions is equal to the Ka times by the weak acid, in this case, methanoic acid, concentration divided by the concentration of methanoic ions, which is the conjugate base. Literally, just plug in the values we generated from our working. So 1.7 times 10 to the minus 4 is the Ka value from the question itself. 0.24 was our concentration of methanoic acid worked out previously. 0.4 was our concentration of methanoic ions worked out previously. And that generates a hydrogen ion concentration value of 1.02 times 10 to the minus 4 moles per litre of hydrogen ions. Now we're ready to work out the pH of our buffer. pH is calculated by using the minus log to the base 10 of the hydrogen ion concentration. So minus log to the base 10 of 1.02 times 10 to the minus 4 gives us a pH of 3.99 to two decimal places. And that is the pH of this particular buffer solution. Congratulations, guys. You've just completed a six mark A-level buffer calculation. Woohoo! Good job. Thank you for listening through the end there, guys, and I really hope this gives you a methodical step-by-step -step method that you can use to solve buffer calculations in the future, and I wish you the best of luck in your endeavours in doing so. Just stands me to say thank you again, and if you found this video useful, please do think about giving it a like. You can always subscribe to the channel. You can even ring the bell to get notified about this content. I do put out videos on a weekly basis, and your support is hugely appreciated. helps to keep me motivated to keep making videos. You can even share this video or other videos on the channel with friends studying chemistry to help them with their studies as well. That'd be really cool. And finally, um, as always from me, take care. Bye now.